How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Tacoma Beach channel where as you all know, it's all about the taco. On today's video, we're gonna be running a bunch of tests comparing the front stock brake system on our Tacoma to the all new Alcan upgrade kit. Is this kit really worth it? What's the point of running bigger rotors? What's the point, point on running bigger calipers, bigger brake pads? We're about to find out. Now it's time to do the OEM brake system test. We're here at this abandoned road. We've created a start line, a brake line here with our checkered flags. And the goal is to reach 60 miles per hour. As soon as I cross this brake line, I'm gonna slam on my brakes, making sure that I don't lock up the tires. And we're gonna be measuring the distance it took the truck to come to a complete stop from the brake line all the way until it happens. The truck is currently standing at around 5,500 pounds. That is 1,000 pounds over stock weight. All right, here we go. 60 miles. Man, it took a while to break, it's crazy. All right, so we're gonna go all the way to the front bumper as if we were getting in a car crash. Took us 171 feet to come to a complete stop from driving 60 miles an hour. Now we're gonna run this again four more times and then get the average uh, total braking distance for the OEM kit. Then we're gonna keep running it back to back to back to back and count how many times it takes us to reach total brake failure and compare that to the new Alcon upgraded kit. Whoa. All right, so this is crazy. It's literally in the same exact spot of our first run. So we're gonna put comma, second run right here. And uh, now we're gonna go for our third run. Let's do this. Here we go, test number three. I think we passed it, dude. I think we actually passed it. All right, we're gonna start here at the 171 feet mark. One, two, three. We are at 178. This was test number three for the OEM kit. Yo, come see this. So we're gonna have to abort uh, test number four and five and potentially reaching brake failure. Uh, we're losing brake fluid from the back. This is not supposed to have any fluid. This is a boot. Okay. That's just so dirt doesn't go inside there. All right. With this one, you blew it out. That's just a boot, so no dirt goes inside. So that's where the leaks started and happening. Coming right out, and then these are saturated, so yeah, these are no good. I and mean, I don't think there should be a problem with the master cylinder, but then the, look at these things. They're all rusted up, man. That's what I have here. So we're gonna put those, the shoes, and the and the wheel cylinder on both sides. And we're back on the testing site. Uh, thankfully, the rear brake shoes are fixed no longer leaking. Let's take a look at what happens. So for those of you that don't know, when you apply your brakes, you're sending brake fluid through the brake lines and uh, eventually they'll make their way down to the rear brakes. It goes through the brake wheel uh, cylinder and then this will push outward. There's some components here that are missing. Eventually that will push the brake shoes outward. They'll hit the walls and that's how you use your rear brakes. Uh, why did it break? I have two theories. One, a mixture of corrosion and a little bit of me just being too intense on the brake. So as you guys have seen, we go all over the country. We're getting this thing caked with red mud, uh, mud from all over the place, constantly hitting it, dust. We're going to, uh, we've gone to Portland, Oregon. We've hit the beach, salt flats, and I do have a wave runner. So I'm constantly putting the rear end of this truck in salty water. I do my best to try to clean it, but eventually it seems like it got to it. As you guys can see, this thing is extremely rusty in the outside and it was extremely rusty and caked with mud in the inside. The guy did a solid job at cleaning it so that we can show you what happened. So as you can see here, we have the brake wheel cylinder. If I pull this back and pull it out, you can see the seal broke right there and that's essentially why we had the leak. But you can also see here that this part bent. So in theory, what I believe happened was you're applying your brakes, it eventually reaches the braking point where you can no longer keep going 
your brake fluid has been maxed out it cannot compress anymore i continue to press the brakes think of having a hydraulic press on this thing eventually one of these components is going to give out right and that's what happened first gave out at the bottom completely bent and then all the pressure went up to the top wheel brake cylinder and then the seal broke we weren't testing for the rear brakes uh, thankfully we have them fixed now it's time to continue testing the front brakes so as long as i apply the right amount of braking where i already feel like the tires have reached well the brakes have reached the maximum braking capacity i'm just not going to keep pushing down on the brake i'm just going to leave it right there and then we'll see what happens here we go That's a fourth run, and it's just 179. Here we go, test number five. Right about there. So 175 feet. Test number five for the OEM kit. We now have our benchmark data point for our average stopping distance, which is 174.8 feet. Now we're going to test for brake fade. I know originally at the beginning of this video, I said I wanted to test for total brake failure. We got what we asked for, the brakes did fail. That's not originally what we intended. We wanted the brake fade to happen. For those of you that do not know what brake fade is, brake fade is when the brake pads and the brake rotors are no longer working together to generate the friction required for the vehicle to come to a complete stop. It just keeps getting worse. This time we're gonna change the experiment around. We're gonna drive from 40 miles per hour all the way down to zero and see how many times it takes to reach brake fade and compare that to the new Alcon upgrade kit. You can see it getting worse and worse. I can already feel it coming. It's starting to, I can already smell that break. Take a look at that. So we managed to reach a brake fade. And uh, I can feel how the truck is not stopping. I'm pushing down. I don't want to abuse it because I already saw what happened. Uh, you guys can see the smoke coming out. We're going at 40 miles per hour here. I want to show you something. This is where the truck just stopped. You can see here the lines that we've marked. Kind of beat that one. That's us going at 40 miles per hour. Us going at 60 miles per hour, we were stopping here. When we first started this experiment, when the rotors and brake pads were cold, the first stop was all the way over here. That's crazy. Look how it started to progressively just get worse. It took us nine tries to reach brake fade. Now it's time for us to head to Lux Tires and install the Alcon upgrade kit. We are here at Lux Tires, our favorite shop here in Miami, Florida. As you guys know, we're constantly traveling all over the country and we've built a list of shops that we trust. We've trusted Lux Tires with our second gen, our third gens. They're constantly working on our vehicle when we're down here. If you guys wanna check the list of shops that we trust, then head on over to TacomaBeast.com on the section that says shops that we trust. We've managed to work with them to hook you guys up with awesome discount codes so you guys can take the parts to them and get them installed. Make sure to check that out. Now let's take a look at what comes inside the box. You're gonna receive two rotors, two six piston calipers. The stock come with four pistons. Brake pads are gonna be included in both calipers. As you guys can see, the brake pads are huge compared to the stock brake pads. You guys are gonna receive the brackets to install the calipers and all the necessary hardware along with the stainless steel brake lines. Now it's time to go install the kit. These 
these rotors are significantly bigger. They fit most 17 inch wheels and uh, we have confirmed a lot of the method wheels to fit. So these method wheels are new and it's gonna be interesting to see if it does fit with the new caliper. As you can see, it's already a tight fit as it is. We still need to fit the caliper in there. We're about to find out if we can make this happen. I did reach out to Method. I did reach out to Alkin. It technically should fit. Let's compare the rotors here. These are the poor stock rotors that you guys saw earlier today. Completely smoked. We destroyed them. Compared to the all new Alkin rotors, let's take a look at what this difference is in size. So these are about 12.5 in diameter and the new Alkin rotors are 14 inches. So we got about two inches there, it's crazy. What's wild is how much more braking surface we have compared to the stock. So right now Beto's installing the aftermarket rotor and we immediately realized that we're gonna have to cut the dust, uh, a few parts of the dust cover off because it is touching. So from what it seems like, we gotta cut a little bit from the top, a little bit from below, and then we have to see if it's gonna affect the calipers as well. It's time to do some bro engineering. All right, so Beto basically chopped off some of the dust cover up here. Then he trimmed off some over here. As you can see, it's not much. And then down here as well. Beto, let's take a look and see if, uh, if that should do the work. As we continue to install this kit, we notice we have to cut more of the dust cover off. As you can see, the caliper bracket does not fit here. It needs to fit in all the way and the dust cover is not allowing us to do that. So we're gonna tr trim some off from here, up here, and that should do the work. All right, the brake rotor has been installed and the caliper. One thing to take note, these rotors have a left side and a right side. The way you're able to tell is by these crevices here. Picture them as being Pac-Man, right? You want Pac-Man to eat, so facing forward. You don't want Pac-Man to face backwards, right? And that's how you know they're in the right spot. Another thing, another reason for the crevices, kind of work like the slotted rotors. It's to prevent from dust building up, from the gases that are being released. So that stops it and kind of makes it fly out. Now it's time for the moment of truth, which is, will the wheels fit with how massive these rotors and calipers are? Uh, these calipers are really scaring me right now. Moment of truth. Oh, it fits! It fits, dude! And, and the best part of all, is we were scared the weights were gonna touch the caliper. It's about half an inch away. It looks incredible. Now it's time to see how they perform. All right, fellas, we're back at the testing site. We bled the brake lines. We did what's called brake bedding, basically broke in the brakes. The way we did this was driving 60 miles per hour and we would ease on the brakes until we came down to 30 miles per hour and we did that 10 times. Drove around the city to cool off the brakes and that was it. So the truck is nicely broken in. It's ready to go. We have to beat 171 feet to beat the OEM brake system. If we're able to do that, we're able to prove that the new Alcon upgrade kit is better than the OEM brake system. Let's go find out. All right, I'm really excited for this right now. I honestly think this kit is gonna destroy the OEM system. I mean, it has to. You guys saw the braking surface. It's huge. The brake pads are massive. It just makes sense for this kit to be so much better. Hundred and fifty eight as opposed to hundred and seventy one. That's 12 feet of a difference that we're seeing here. We're at 60. That was so much better. Uh, let's see. Yep, exactly 143. Here we go, test number three. Gonna be 
two feet. So 150, test number four, here it goes. Oh wow, best run yet. <laughs> right here, let's see what that is. 129 plus three. 132. Do this. 60. Break. All right, fellas, for the last test, test number five, we got 139 feet. If we get the average of the Alcon brake kit, we're looking at 144.4 feet. If we compare that to the OEM brake system average of 174.8 feet, that is 30.4 feet difference. That's something I can definitely live with and makes in my opinion, this kit worth it. It did not let me down. Now it's time to test for total brake fade. We're gonna be running the truck from 40 miles per hour to zero and count how many times it takes us to reach total brake fade. For the OEM brake system, it took us nine times. I think we can double that. Let's find out. Test number nine. I cannot even smell the brakes. Brake. Test number 10. We beat the OEM kit. Let's see how much further we can keep going. Test 20. We just doubled our goal, we just passed it two runs ago. No sign of brake fade really. I'm just wasting my tires here. Test 25. And I think we're gonna leave it at that guys. I think we're gonna leave it at that. Uh, it is safe to say the Alcon upgrade kit has proven to us that uh, we're nowhere close to reaching brake fade, really. All right, so for our best brake fade test on the upgraded Alcon kit, we're at 55 feet. And then if we go to our absolute worst run, we're at 73 feet. All right, fellas, let's take a look at our data here. We ran a total of two tests. The first test was to see how long it would take us to drive the truck from 60 miles per hour all the way down to zero. And then the second test was to see how long it would take us to reach total brake fade. If we look at our first test when we ran the OEM brake system, on average, it took us 174.8 feet to come to a complete stop versus the Alcon upgrade kit that took us 144.4 feet to come to a complete stop. That is 30.4 feet difference. That's like two car lengths in front of you. That's awesome. For test number two, it took the OEM brake kit a total of nine tries until we reached total brake fade. You guys saw how the brake rotors and brake pads were smoking. It was awesome to see that. I did feel sorry for the truck. And then when we did the Alcon upgrade kit, it, we, we ran it and ran it until we got to 25 tries we completely destroyed the OEM brake kit. We decided to stop there and it was bouncing back and forth between 55 feet to 73 feet. Just kept bouncing back. It was giving us no sign of brake fade. I kept trying to smell the rotors. There was no smell. I think it's safe to say the new Alcon upgrade kit destroyed the OEM kit. That about wraps it up for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to smash that like button. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure to do so. And we do have new merch. Make sure to head on over to TacomaVs.com, get yourself one of our new t-shirts, and we will see you in the next video.